The nation's first primary kicks off this week in Texas. That's where Democrats are hoping to make major gains deep in the red state. This comes as the president tweets his support for the entire slate of Republican lawmakers down to the state's railroad commissioner. And now many are looking to the Lone Star State to set the tone for this year's midterm elections. Uh, Gromer Jeffers is a political writer for Dallas Morning News, and he's been following these uh, primary races really closely. So thanks for joining us, Gromer. So um, it's great to be here. This is sort of really interesting because even though uh, tomorrow is when the primary is going to start, there has already been early voting. And one of the interesting things that we're seeing in Texas is a lot of Democrats are coming out to vote. Right. Early voting with Democrats is double the number of voters we had uh, in 2014, four years ago, the last midterm election. So. You know, Democrats are excited about that. And you mentioned at the top Trump's endorsements. Well, in a way, this midterm election in Texas is all about Trump. It's a referendum on him. Democrats are still in mourning uh, over the 2016 election. Well, the mourning is probably over. They want to strike back. They want to send Trump a message. And so that's why you see the surge of uh, early voters in Democratic primaries. Uh, a lot of these voters are first-time voters to the uh, Democratic primary or new voters to the Democratic primaries. Or uh, maybe they voted one time or two times. But these are voters that clearly want to strike a blow against Trump uh, in November. That's really interesting. All right, so let's break down some of the key races here. We have Democratic Representative uh, Beto O'Rourke. Uh, giving up his uh, House seat to challenge uh, Republican Senator Ted Cruz in November. So who's favored in tomorrow's primary? Well, both of them are going to win their, their respective primaries, right? And this is sort of a setup for the November general election. O'Rourke is, uh, again, he gave up his seat to, to run in the Democratic primary. He's, he faces light opposition there. But his, the enthusiasm for him, have, it's been off the charts. Mm -hmm. And Cruz, earlier this month, or, or last month, said that Democrats would walk across glass to vote in November. So he's concerned about the excitement gap between O'Rourke's campaign and his campaign at this moment, and trying to urge Republicans to get in gear. Now, winning a statewide race for a Democrat in Texas is still, that's a still heavy lift because there's a structural advantage. It's believed to be about 800,000 more Republican voters here than Democrats. But O'Rourke is running a great campaign so far. And if anybody breaks through on a statewide break, uh, basis on the Democratic side, it will probably be him. All right, let's talk about uh, Congressman, uh, another sort of vulnerable Congressman, Representative Pete Sessions. He's the son of uh, former FBI Director Will Sessions. Hillary Clinton Hi. won his district in 2016. So do you expect a Democratic flip, perhaps, at that primary? Or in that primary, rather? M many people do. Hillary Clinton won that district. Now, consider this. Two years ago, Pete Sessions had zero Democratic challengers. For this election, there are seven. Hmm. They see something, they see the writing on the wall. The demo, there, there have been demographic shifts in that district going on for years. And again, with the anti-Trump sentiment coupled with the more Democrats in the electorate, that could be trouble for Sessions. It, the, the district still leans Republican, but again, Clinton proved that a Democrat can win in that area. So the Democrats are also looking to take a GOP Representative Will Hurd's seat. What can we expect there? Again, that district is really a, uh, the only real purple district in, in Texas over the years. It's, it's gone back and forth. Will Hurd has held it, held it now for you know, several years. But again, the numbers there favor, in, in some instances, a Democrat, particularly in a year where turnout is expected to favor Democrats. This isn't a presidential year. So Heard has an advantage, as Republicans do, in a regular midterm election. But if there is this blue wave coming and, and there is an anti-Trump sentiment that many expect in November, then Heard could go down as well. You talked about this midterm election being uh, sort of a referendum on Donald Trump, that um, the Democrats are, sort of, are, are particularly fired up, and that is a concern. 
What about voter apathy on the Republican side? Are Republicans concerned that uh, maybe people who came out to support Donald Trump, uh, maybe they're changing their opinion, or they think that, you know, he, that Texas is such a strong Republican state that they don't need to come out? Is there a concern about a Republican voter apathy? There is a concern. You know, there's a natural letdown sometimes when you have an historic election uh, the way you did in 2016. We saw it in from 2008 to 2010. Republicans came roaring back in 2010. Well, that's expected again this time. The, the governor of this state, Greg Abbott, warned folks when he, looked, when he saw the early vote totals that conservatives should be shaken to their core looking at the numbers. So there's a concern about Republican apathy. There's a concern about uh, just a malaise, just a, a beat down with all the anti-Trump coverage or, and, and Trump's actions in the White House, the tweets, just everything where you have Democrats fired up. They want to avenge the loss in 2016. Republicans, in a way, some of them are still celebrating. You know, it's, it's almost like a sporting event in, in a sense. You know, in football, a Super Bowl hangover. Right, right. Um, we have seen a number of GOP lawmakers say that they will not be running again, though. A number of them ha right. have been vocal critics of the president. And, you know, I would suggest that they would probably be ending or heading into a fight uh, between them and other Republicans, not to mention the Democrats, but, you know, sort of uh, pro Trump Republicans. They'd probably find themselves facing off with somebody along those lines. And and they were just choosing not to not to gear up for that battle at all. I'm wondering in Texas, right. you know, what's it going to be like for the candidates? How are they going to manage the Trump uh, factor? Because the reality of it is, is that though his um, approval ratings are rather low, they're still pretty high among Republicans. Right. So if you're in a Republican district, for instance, if you're in a district where, where Joe Barton is retiring or Jeb Henseling is retiring, you're probably running closer to Trump. You're embracing the president uh, because you're right. He's popular with Republicans. He's popular with the conservative base. And in primaries, uh, the voters tend to be more conservative in the Republican primary, just like they're more progressive in the Democratic primary. So they're embracing Trump in the primary. The difficulty for folks in swing districts will be what happens in the general election where independents and anti-Trump voters join the process. But you're right, certainly in the Republican primary, everybody's embracing Donald Trump. We, we see commercials, television ads, been r running uh, that uh, are pro-Trump ads, candidates putting their arm around Trump. We've seen Trump endorse various, various candidates in, in these primary races. So it's been, it's been a contrast. And in urban districts, uh, swing districts, the president, you know, people don't talk about him much. But in, in, in red districts, in conservative districts, yes, the president is popular and candidates run to him, not away from him. Very interesting. Well, we will be watching Texas tomorrow. Uh, Gromer Jeffers, thank you so much. You're welcome.